Welcome back everybody to part two of the preparation of epoxides. So now we're focusing on the second method to form an epoxide. So let's go over the second method, okay? So when you guys look at this, this should be pretty familiar from first semester organic chemistry, okay? Um, it should be pretty instant for you guys to determine the product of this reaction, okay? So the product of this reaction, so actually, let's lift, uh, shift this a little bit to the left so we're working, so we have more space to work with. Okay, so again, Br2, or it could be Cl2, right? And it, uh, it, it just the type of halogen, and um, the product of this reaction will be, you have alcohol in a Markovnikov position, and you, and, uh, it could either be wedged um, or dashed and then you have a bromine in the other position so they're anti to each other okay so they're anti to each other okay so some of you guys may be wondering like okay so what does that got to do with um, epoxides and stuff like that well in this next step, you can do the Williamson ether synthesis to form your epoxide. So it, it looks pretty confusing and strange, but it actually will work. So if you use, and I'll go over the reaction mechanism. You guys should know this mechanism pretty, should be pretty standard for you guys from first semester organic chemistry. But the next step of the Williamson ether synthesis, um, I'll go over the reaction mechanism starting from here and the next reagent. Okay. So again, the reagents you use is, okay, you already have your um, primary alkyl halide, so that's check. And, and again, remember, so um, this, the formation of this epoxide works because, again, you, you have a primary alkyl halide. If you didn't have a primary alkyl halide, this reaction wouldn't work, okay? So and I'll go over an example of where this specific uh, strategy does not work to form an epoxide so again we use Na sodium hydride okay it's an ionic relationship so there's a pair of electrons here okay so the result of this is your epoxide wedged okay and there you have it that's your epoxide okay so let's go over the reaction mechanism starting from here to here, okay? So I'm going to erase all, excuse me, sorry about that. I'll erase everything here so far, okay? And I'll start off again from here uh, to here. Okay, so we're dealing with this type of alcohol and... Um, Let's be consistent and draw this wedged, and let's draw this one um, dashed, and there was our bromine, right? So that's what we started off with from the second step. So let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so there you go. So now, we we'll use sodium hydride, okay? So sodium hydride, so Na plus H minus, right? Again, it's an ionic relationship. This hydrogen has a, a lone pair, okay? So it has two electrons here. Okay? So now what can happen is, again, uh, you guys should remember the reaction um, reaction mechanism of the Williamson ether synthesis. You, um, this hydrogen attacks this hydrogen, right? Forms a bond with it, so you form H2. And you kick off this pair of electrons here to this uh, to the oxygen. Okay, so that's what you do as um, in the first step. So now what you form? I forgot to tell you this in the in the preparation of ethers that when you have uh, the this what you have here an oxygen with a negative charge is called an alkoxide okay 
So that's something um, not really significant, but something some names to be familiar with is pretty important in that aspect. So you have your uh, you have your bromine here now. Again, what happens now is that you form a bond with this carbon of the uh, with the carbon the halogen is attached to. So you form a bond here, okay, while kicking off the bromine and the pair of electrons, okay? So let's draw these arrows a little bit darker so you, can, you guys can see. Okay, so oxygen is forming a bond here, kicking off the pair of electrons and the bromine out of the way. So the product will be your epoxide again wedged okay and you have your BR minus okay so that's how um, um, the Williamson ether synthesis can be utilized to form epoxides again you need to have a primary alkyl halide in order for the reaction to work so let's just say for conversation for for conversation's sake that um, uh, let's erase this arrow. Let's erase this arrow here. Okay. Let's just say, for example, that you had something like that. Okay. That the starting alkene you're starting off with, you're starting off with, was something like this. You use Br two H two O. You ended up with. Um, doesn't matter. Br could attach to any of the positions since it will be the same sub. Um, these are both substituted the same way, so you would have had a Br, um, uh, excuse me, you had an OH here, and then you had a Br here, okay? So again, if this was your starting material for the Williamson ether synthesis, it would not work because you have a secondary alkyl halide. This carbon here, attached directly to the bromine, is attached to two different carbon groups, one, two. Okay, so the preparation of epoxide in this specific case would not work because instead of getting your um, somewhat SN2 style uh, reaction mechanism uh, in this Williamson ether synthesis, you get an E2 elimination. Okay, and you would not form um, or generate your epoxide. So that's very key, uh, something very key to know that um, make sure that it follows all the criteria that I explained to you guys in the previous videos okay that your alkyl halide must be primary in order for you guys to do the Williamson ether synthesis so that's something very key to keep in mind uh, so there you guys have it so those are the two main ways uh, to prepare an epoxide um, in the future videos so I'm almost actually done with the functional group ethers the last thing I need to talk about is uh, the reactions of the epoxides and um, that will probably take up about two or three videos and uh, that's it for the preparation of videos I hope you guys enjoyed I hope you guys learned something um, this is Moballer12 and I'm signing out